What's up YouTube fans? I've been away on travel for a little while so I haven't had a chance to do any reviews or any news videos but when I came back from my trip I found this on my doorstep and I am so excited. I finally got a figure on time or early enough to do a review and you know this guy actually came shipped express from uh, from Japan so I've switched my carrier. I'm no longer with TF Source. They just, for whatever reason, they, they take too long. You know, I got this off of eBay. I got it way faster than any of the uh, retail stores like TF Source are getting it out. So, finally found a place that's working for me. But uh, this thing is already looking really awesome, so I'm excited to get this out. Uh, the box is pretty big, actually. It, it's about the same height as one of the original MP boxes similar to Masterpiece Soundwave but the width is about maybe two-thirds of the uh, Masterpiece Soundwave box so new box size diff much different than what they've been using before uh, so they had to basically make a new box for this which is kinda cool now here in the back it does show uh, Masterpiece Soundwave, I'm sorry, Masterpiece Shockwave in his robot and gun mode and then have him posed here with Soundwave and with Starscream. And also I'm kind of showing off his uh, accessories, his straight hand here, uh, him shooting himself. He's got a little gun that just looks like just like him. Uh, you've got the light up features, so lots of different uh, features on this guy. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, the box is pretty much the same as all the other box on the bottom. We got kind of a picture of all the accessories. MP29, Destron Laser Wave is what they call him. Uh, of course, in the States, we've called him um, Shockwave. I believe Destron means uh, Decepticon here. Uh, but pretty nice box. So let's get him out of here and take a look at what we got inside. So we've got quite a few accessories here in the tray. Looks like this is the backpack. This is the little mini gun. What's amazing is it looks just like him. It's awesome. Uh, you got a couple of hand sets here. You got a clear set, and one is a fist, and one is a looks like uh, straight, so he can salute. And then you've got his clear. Um, cannon here. So really cool accessories. And then you've got instruction book. Now this thing is gigantic. I'm not sure why it's so big. The bag itself is, is really big. Get this out of here. So here's the collector's card. Oh, and unfortunately it's been bent right here. I don't know if that's coming across camera, but they did get a little bent, unfortunately. <clears throat> it's got a, some kind of mark there. But as far as the picture, really awesome art on this thing. This is the first one I've seen kind of with a, almost like a Decepticon home base or uh, Decepticon um, shuttlecraft uh, background. And you've got kind of light up features on him. Really, really cool. Uh, he's got pretty high stats here. He's got a couple sevens, but otherwise all nines and tens. And uh, really cool. I like this a lot. Then you also get the stickers. And I'm not sure exactly where these go. I don't know if I want to use these stickers or the metallic foil stickers. Um, I'll have to take a look and see. What one looks better. You've got the little uh, bendy wire here. Let's take a look at this. Take this out of here. So it looks like they've made it out of metal, which is pretty cool. It's almost like a slinky. Kind of feels like a slinky. Um, but then there's a wire or a, some kind of string inside holding the whole thing together. So really nice design for this little thing. Take a look at that again a little bit later. And finally, you got the instruction booklet here. It's very big for some reason. 
Oh, about the same size. It's just folded up. It's not folded up as small as it usually is. And here you got the instructions. So you got a nice shot here of uh, Shockwave saluting to Megatron, I believe. And you got another one of called Laser Vulcan, where he's holding himself. That must have happened in the cartoon, but here he is holding himself, so it shows off that. You got his barrel hand, barrel and hand, so you've got the barrel choice, and you've also got the straight hand where he's saluting. You got his backpack, and that's also from the cartoon, so really, really nicely done. I think, from what I can tell in these pictures, this guy's going to look really awesome in the hand. And on the back, of course, you just got the transformation instru instructions. But very nicely done. Nice quality instructions, as always. Thanks to Takara. So let's take, get this guy out of the box here. I did, did need to cut the tape off here. Unfortunately, I didn't even have a chance to unbox this guy. Pretty, pretty neat. Right away, this, this, this is kind of unsatisfying. The uh, little trigger is sort of in a place where you can't reach it. Now let's take everything out here. So you've got the little, little mini shockwave here. Looks like this is a string whereas the one on the figure is actually metal, but still pretty pretty neat little gun. And you've got a whole bunch of hands here, so we'll take a look. You've got the straight hand. Oh, it looks like it's got a uh, it's got a ball joint right at the uh, wrist. So that's pretty nice. Same thing for the clear one. It's got a ball joint. Nice, really nice quality plastic on these in these guys. And then you've got the clear fist here that just has one pin on the on the end and the thumb. Okay, you do have a rotation at the uh, wrist, so pretty pretty nicely done. Then you've also got the painted hand. Now I don't know what's mounted on here right now. I wonder what's in there. We'll have to take a look. But you've got basically two sets of right hands. And then you got one left hand uh, for the uh, cannon, so I'm not sure what's on there. Uh, here you got the backpack. Looks like it. Uh, oh, the backpack becomes the stand. Okay, that's pretty neat. Actually, that's awesome. That's such a good use of the backpack. Let's take a look at that. Get this box out of here. So it looks like you got backpack here. And it just kind of sits on it. Yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. I, I'm impressed with that they were able to set it up that way and uh, utilize the backpack as a stand. Re really nicely done. Uh, you also got the little there's a lot of holes on the top of this thing and there's screws in there so there's a lot of screw holes on here but whatever and it looks like this goes right here on the top and that, that's pretty cool I haven't put any batteries in this or yet, so I don't, I don't think this is going to actually work. Um, but there's a little switch here. Yeah, so I think you need to you need to put the batteries in. So right now this is is not operational. So we'll get the batteries in and uh, try this out a little bit. So right right away I can see a little looks like issue with this coming together right. Let's see. 
looks like there's two tabs right here and this top piece is supposed to connect to those tabs but doesn't want to go in uh, maybe this is just on my copy but that's a little disappointing that that doesn't want to go together hmm I wonder if they have some extra plastic on there that's preventing it from going in. Well, whatever. That doesn't attach. That's kind of a bummer. Yeah, it looks like they got a little bit of extra plastic here. Probably a little bit of shaving would help with that. But yeah, it doesn't wanna it doesn't wanna sit flush, unfortunately. I don't want to force it and break it, but overall, pretty nice figure. You know, this this little you know trigger is kind of stupid. Also, the way, when you hold this thing, the uh, feet kind of get in the way. You know, it kind of digs into your your the bottom of your hand here. So not not the best ergonomics for holding it, but I'm very unlikely I'm going to be displaying it in uh, gun mode. Most likely I'll be displaying this in the uh, robot mode. Um, but that's about it for uh, gun mode. It doesn't look like there's any of these accessories go onto it or attached to it or anything like that. Uh, so let's uh, let's get this guy into robot mode, and we'll be right back. Hi hey guys! Before we go into robot mode, I just wanted to show off the uh, light up feature. Uh, you do have to open up this panel here with a screwdriver, and it does not come with batteries. And you, this thing, you kind of have to pop it off, and you put uh, two AA. Or sorry, AAA batteries in there. Fortunately, it does not come with the batteries. And you just close up the uh, compartment there. It does kind of snap in. And then you want to re tighten the screw here. And now here's the firing mechanism. Now, I, like I said, this trigger is kind of hard to get to, so you got to stick your finger in there, but. There's the light up feature. Really nice and bright. I don't know if that's coming across camera, but it's it's quite bright. Now you can also switch to the alternate mode. Here's a little switch right there. Push that down. And now it has like a fade, a fading feature. And that's that's pretty neat too. I think that's really cool that they thought of that. Also looks like you can switch mid it shot so pretty nice you know I really don't have a need for the light up feature it, it it doesn't seem necessary to me but it's cool that they included that they were really trying to mimic the uh, G1 figure there so very nice add on there alright well that is now it for it uh, Gun mode. We're gonna get this guy transformed, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back from transforming. Uh, I do notice that on the camera, he looks a little more blue than he is. He's really, uh, you know, a lighter shade of purple. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to it's hard to show, but he he is a, he is a slightly lighter shade of purple than I think. The Quake Wave, you know, Fan Toys Quake Wave, and I don't know if it's an exact match to the cartoon. You know, when looking at the instruction booklet, there are some shots of uh, Shock Wave from the cartoon, and he, and he does appear to be a much darker, you know, deep grape purple. So this one's a little bit lighter, and I don't know, that might bother some people. I don't really care. I, you know, to be honest, I was never a huge Shockwave fan. I never, I never owned Shockwave, and uh, I did have a friend that owned him. And I remember him just being big and clunky and heavy, and people loved him. And I, I don't know why. I just never was a fan of him. But this thing, 
This thing is awesome. I mean, it's the way it comes together, first of all, is, is awesome. It is really well designed. Takara, once again, upped their, their own ante and uh, made a really good figure. My, I think this is better than uh, the previous, the Hot Rod figure. Only because it's solid, you know. Um, for example, it's got uh, very strong ratcheted feet and they are die cast. There's also a piece of die cast back here. I'm going to take apart the uh, backpack so you can see it. By the way, the way the backpack comes together, beautifully done, you know, well engineered figure. You know, I really am impressed with this thing. Alright, so this piece right here, this long purple piece is, is die cast. And when you try to put the, you know, this piece on without the backpack, it doesn't really want to go. And, I, and I'm not sure if it's because it's not supposed to or, or what, but there are two notches on here and there's two pegs but when you try to put them together it pops out so I, I don't know what the deal is there but I think it looks much better with the backpack and also I like the fact that this goes on there so I, I won't have any need to um, this is really heavy by the way because the die cast this piece is, is extremely heavy um, but yeah I, I won't have any need to put that on there anyways but, but the way this comes together you know it really it slides in and you kind of has a nice kind of a click when it gets in there and then you close the top here and th now this plastic piece has a couple of uh, slots and behind it the slot from the this piece it lines up so maybe that it was never meant to attach here but when you put this one on sorry now I'm having trouble now I'm saying it but it, it does click right into place and it stays it's solid I mean it's not going anywhere and also this pops through kind of like a fin which I think is really cool and um, this piece comes out of the bottom so really really well designed uh, backpack you know, it's not just a full parts forming, it's this needed to be here in order to match the cartoon and in order to match the G1 figure. And I, th I think it came out great, you know. Um, one of the things is the legs. They're, they're hollow inside, but the way they made this, they had it come together and sort of uh, piece together. But uh, it's really just this piece. And there's a peg right here. And that peg goes into that peg slot. And it, it fits well, you know, and it looks good. But something about it is not quite satisfying. It's it's kind of hollow or loose. You know, I mean, this panel fitment's not that tight. And also this plastic is a little flimsy. It doesn't feel that strong compared to the the foot which is die cast and the rest of the figure which is very very I mean everything is tight on this thing it just it's it's a good well designed figure in the arms the elbows the knee joints all all well de designed uh, one one of the things that is loose is uh, is the leg the uh, hip joints and a little bit loose you know it doesn't quite clank but it, it does uh, come down a little bit, but because you've got such tight ankle joints and knee joints, you can really get a wide stance here. Oh, by the way, you do have rockers here, so you can get a nice angle on this guy. Yeah, so you can see his, his hips are kind of slipping. And that's, that shouldn't happen. It shouldn't be slipping like that. But anyway, you can get some nice nice poses with this guy. Wow. All right, so I spoke too soon. These uh, these hip joints are definitely too loose. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of an issue. But other than that, this thing looks really awesome. His head sculpt is really cool. It would have been neat if they could have made the ears move, but they're they're pretty much stationary here.
So really nice head sculpt. Uh, you know, I think he, he mimics the G1. Now they did make this clear so you get a little bit of light piping coming through on the uh, on the eye there. So really well done. Really nicely designed uh, head sculpt there. So let's take a look at his uh, feature. Yeah, see this is one of the issues I have. This this comes apart too. If you're not careful when you're messing with it, the legs seem to come apart. So, not perfect. A well-designed figure, but not perfect. And maybe I spoke a little too soon when I was saying this was better quality than the hot rod. Only because the legs do seem to have a little bit of issue. So we'll take a look at uh, his accessories now, and he does, he comes with a ton of hands, and I'll take a look at uh, these saluting hands first. So I'll take this, this looks like, a, this is, appears to be a right hand, so get that on the right hand there, and yeah, see, so this is the third time this has come disconnected here, so I'm, I'm going to say the the leg does have a little bit of an issue staying, unless I transformed it wrong. I don't think I did. Yeah, it looks right. So, so yeah, it just it just wants to pop out, and that's kind of unfortunate with such a everything else being really nice on this transformer. So, let's take a look. Let's see how we can do. He doesn't have a double jointed elbow, so you can't really get his. It looks more like he's looking off into the distance rather than actually saluting. It's hard to get him in the right position to be saluting. Oh, and this came off again. Yeah, that's a problem. And I don't know if this is just on my copy or a, genero, a generic problem with this guy, but the fact that this leg keeps coming off it's pretty irritating. All right, but you can see you can kind of get the arm in there, and it sort of looks right, but you really can't get it close enough to his head to be actually saluting. And it should be a little. You just can't get it right into position. So I won't be using this anyway. I find no use for this hand, but it's actually quite nicely designed, you know, with this ball joint. All right, and you also got the translucent hand, but again, kind of silly. This reminds me of the Ironhide accessories where they gave you a, like 10 different uh, nozzle hands. You don't need them all. But, so this is a little bit useless to me. Now you do get two regular hands here. So if you want to put regular his regular right hand on, which was on the figure when we got it, Take off his gun. He could put his left hand on. And now you just got him with the regular, regular hands. So that's not bad. I mean, it's good that you have that option to uh, have him be just a regular, regular-handed figure. Well, I got the hands in there. Let's take a look at his gun here, and it's it's really nicely detailed, nicely painted gun here. Even down to this little string. I, I think that's a nice touch. Nice touch by Takara. So let's take a look how this fits. I think I might actually display him with this because this is pretty cool. Um, so they've changed the design of the hand where the slot's now in the back, so you kind of got to wedge it back in there. But once you get it in there, it stays really nicely. Just got to push it back there. There you go. There he is with his holding himself his shockwave gun. And I think that looks really cool. I like that. Now you've also got the clear hand and the clear gun if you want to mimic the toy version. You can replace it.
There you go. And we'll take this hand off here and put on the clear version. And I actually kind of do like the clear version. It's, it's pretty, pretty nice looking. Now you do have the uh, hand here and it has a button but you have to you have to install the battery which is right here so let's take a look at that now it's the same kind of thing you have a little panel here you gotta take the screw off by the way there is some stickers that you need to put on on this figure if you want it to be fully ready <laughs> and it's a little bit unfortunate that they make you do that alright well it looks like it does not come with these uh, batteries here that's a little unfortunate how <laughs> I have to find those batteries it does not come with the figure so unfortunately if you want to light up the hand I get the the uh, manual out here and it does show you right here how to replace the uh, batteries well I'm not really sure what it's saying here but it looks like they want you to tape the battery I really don't know what they're saying there maybe when the, fi when the figure's not in use they want you to tape this shut so it doesn't leak, the battery doesn't leak. I, I really don't know what this is saying. Fortunately, <laughs> it's, in, it's in Japanese, so all I can tell is looks like there's a tape, a little piece of tape around it. But regardless of that, it does not come with it. So you do have to go and buy your own set of batteries. And unfortunately, I don't have this handy. Well, let me take a look and see if I have these batteries and then we'll see if we can get this feature working. Alright guys, I figured out uh, the batteries and I also figured out what that little um, indicator was in the instruction booklet. They want you to put a little piece of paper or tape, I think, so that you can take the batteries back out. That's my guess anyway. Um, so what you can do is kind of stick a little piece of paper here where you're going to put the battery in and then you can stick the the battery the plus side has to go towards the gun so you can put this first one in the second one's a little trickier you kind of got to get it underneath the spring there so if you put it kind of in an angle you can kind of get it in there let's see it's pretty tight but you can get it in and now you got this piece of paper that if you wanted to pull it wanted to pull the battery out you can pull the, the piece of paper out with it uh, basically you kind of just stick the piece of paper in there put the cover back on and now you're good to go you're good to uh, well let's see you're not good to go There we go. Then you just put the screw back in. And you've got a button right here on this side. You click that. And there you go. Let's see if it changes modes here. So it doesn't look like this one changes modes. Hopefully you can see that. Really quite cool. I'm impressed that they did that. <clears throat> Although this looks like it lights up, the chest does not light up. Also this arm doesn't appear to have a button and also does not light up. But still pretty, pretty impressive that they were able to include that. Yeah, overall, uh, re really a nice, nice touch.
So there you have his light up cannon feature. <clears throat> Pretty well done. Obviously this works with the translucent um, hand cover. Let's see what happens if you put on the non-translucent one. I'm guessing it's not going to look so great. By the way, if you look inside there, there, there is some light piping so that the light will come through. <clears throat> see with this yeah so this this doesn't look great and that is the advantage of having this translucent one you really want to have that translucent thing on there there you go and I think that looks really awesome so that's about it for the accessories we kind of went through the gun and the hands um, Really, really a well-built figure. I, I like the, the design. This is about the only thing that bothers me is the legs do come apart quite easily. Uh, but the arms, the ratchets, oh, let's go over uh, articulation at this point. <clears throat> you do have the head on a ball joint. It, it does go all the way around. You can look up and look down. It has a pretty, pretty good, it's pretty solid. You know, it doesn't really flop or anything. Uh, the arm is on a ratcheting shoulder joint here. And it can, it's on a ratchet for the uh, swing as well. Or for the rotation. The elbow is also uh, ratcheted. It looks like it goes all the way around based because of the transformation. It is not double jointed. You also have a swivel at the elbow here. Uh, the wrist does pivot. Uh, it does have a little bit of waggle in it. Um, it is on a ball joint. Oh, actually, uh, see, it comes right off. So if you waggle it too much, it comes right off the, the ball joint. Uh, and then you have the typical masterpiece single uh, joint in the hand there. So that's about it for the arms. And you, you do have a waist swivel, uh, which is kind of hindered by this this piece right here. Uh, you also have a little bit of an ab crunch right there, so you can go backwards, you can go forwards. Um, I do love how this little door comes down to hide the uh, trigger. Really, very into you know um, innovative design on this guy. Uh, so that's that's about it for the waist. You got the swivel and you have the uh, ab crunch. Uh, the legs do come out. You have a you have a nice skirt here that actually comes all the way up. So this can come all the way forward. Backward motion you don't get much. It is hindered by this back piece here. You also have another skirt on the side, and you can get the legs all the way out with the splits. Um, that's about it. You do have a rotation at the thigh. Um, this is not the. It, it's actually right here is where it's rotating. That's a good good joint there. You do have a bend at the knee. The appears to cause the thing to come apart again. Now this is starting to get irritating, but. Yeah, if you put a little pressure on this, it tends to buckle. So you really want to not be careful when you're handling that, but um, and maybe hold it, hold it here. Uh, but you do get a nice uh, bend at the knee. It tends to break apart the uh, thigh here. Uh, not too far back, but it does go all the way forward, so you can get him in kind of a. thrust position. Uh, you do have uh, ankle tilt. Oh man. And an ankle pivot here. Very, very nice ratchets on that. This is die cast. Uh, and that's about it for the uh, articulation on this guy. The backpack doesn't articulate, I mean it articulates a little bit but then it, it will get disconnected from the uh, slots there, so really not much articulation. If you want to do the ab crunch, you kind of have to take these off the off the tabs on the back there. 
Uh, but that that's pretty much it for uh, for articulation. Uh, I really am a big fan of this guy. I think they did a good job. Now there is one thing left is uh, these stickers. Now the instructions say to use the larger stickers for his arms and for his chest. I don't really like these for his chest. I think I'm going to use uh, one of these guys. The um, shiny ones here on his chest. But for the arms, I think I, I'm good with these. So we'll show this off here. So it is a nice set of stickers here that you get. So you can basically use a exacto knife to get it off the sheet here. And the sticker sheet is quite tight. The stickers are hard, pretty hard to get off there. Uh, but they do, do feel like good quality stickers. Um, now, I believe this one goes here according to the instructions. So you kind of want to get it right in the center there. That's tough to get it exact but once you put it down you probably don't want to take it off so there's that we'll get the other one on there and normally these masterpiece figures come with their stickers already applied so I know a lot, a lot of people are going to be asking, well, why don't why don't they apply these? You know, I'm not really sure. I think it's maybe because people might have a different preference for what stickers they want on their figure and what stickers they don't. Uh, my personal opinion is this is probably something that they should be doing for you. Shouldn't be something that we have to do because you're paying $160 for this figure. It really should come with the stickers pre-applied, but. Since it doesn't, we'll get it on there. There you go. So now you got the arms done. And I have been noticing this. You know, it does tend to the hips tend to want to come apart, or you know, slowly drift down like that. So when you're posing, you just gotta make sure you have good balance and you have the ankle tilts supporting the figure. And he will stay, he, do he doesn't fall just because of that. Um, but if you have him straight out like this and you kind of set him wide, it will, it will sort of lean down and fall, off, fall down on you. All right, so we've got those two applied there. Now there are two other stickers that are supposed to go on the inner panels here, which get displayed in robot mode. And we'll take a look at that in the manual here. So right here is where they talk about the stickers. So here are the two we just did on the forearms. Now there's two other stickers that go on the, what in, in um, Gun mode are actually the inner forearms of the robot mode. And it says to use A2 or B2, which are the smaller stickers. So if you take a look at this sheet, you've got A2 or B2. I'm not a fan of this the B style. That was like a newer version of the Decepticon symbol. So I'm going to try to use these upper ones here. And get those on there. So you kind of want to get your your exacto knife sort of underneath here, so you can get this off the sticker sheet. It's usually the easiest way. And then now you can apply it. Now this one's actually the other way, so we'll kind of hold a figure like this. Now it doesn't seem to quite fit there. I 
Yeah, it's not the best fit. So I'm not really sure why why I didn't apply this ahead of time instead of making the uh, making us apply these. Yeah, that's actually kind of annoying. Well, anyway, here's that sticker. Ooh. Shockwave got shocked, fell. All right, so that one didn't come out too good. I'm not a big fan of having to put these on myself. We'll finish it up. We'll do the other one here. Now, same kind of thing. You just want to get it off the sticker sheet. You just get the tip of the tip of the knife on there. And you're good to go. So same kind of thing, you want the top facing up, or facing the bottom of the arm. So this one, kind of the same problem, it's barely fits in there, so there's not a lot of room, it's not a lot of wiggle room for you to get it wrong. But there you go. Got the Septicon logos on there. Now you do have some extras, so you can use these for kind of whatever you want. Other figures or somewhere else. Now they say to put this one here. I'm going to go with one of these guys. It's about the same size as this here. So we'll see if we can get this one on there. And before we place it, we'll just take a look and make sure it looks good. As, I mean, these do come off, but you really don't want to be taking them and removing them and adding them too many times. So, I definitely like the shiny silvery one better, so I'm going to use this, this guy. So you really want to, you don't want to take it off once you've put it on. So you want to center it and find your spot before you lay it down. So right there looks pretty good. Yeah, that's perfect. Now you've got the silver sticker there. Kind of matches them up with the uh, a little bit different. You know, gives them a little extra shine. Also matches them up with uh, the Apollyon, which also has a shiny sticker on mine. I wasn't a fan of the the matte stickers. So there you go. Here's our comparisons with uh, Apollyon. And here we have Masterpiece Soundwave. So these guys together kind of represent the leaders other than Starscream and right now I don't have Starscream in uh, robot mode that's why I don't have him in here but they do look good together I, I do feel that Shockwave is a little short in this trio you know he, he should probably be a little bit taller to be the right size but overall Still a very, very nice figure. I'm, I, I'm really impressed with uh, Takara and their last few figures. They, they just keep upping the quality and uh, including all these extras that are really cool. Um, so yeah, this guy, this guy is pretty good. And just for another comparison, we'll bring in uh, Optimus Prime as well. Just for a size comparison here. Yeah, now, so Shockwave does look a little short, unfortunately. He does seem to be 
just a tad shorter than he should be because I remember him being pretty tall. In fact, he was taller than Soundwave. So, what's kind of funny is he, <laughs> Megatron's got his purple gun here and it kind of reminds me of a, a Shockwave. I mean, not really, but it's sort of like Shockwave. Anyway, so really fits in well with the Masterpiece line. Even though this is not the master, this is uh, X Transbots. Overall, a great, a great figure. I can't recommend this enough to people who are fans of Shockwave. Now, I never had the uh, Fan Toys Quake Wave, um, but my opinion, you know, this is the definitive Shockwave or Laser Wave, if you want to call him by the Japanese name. He really does, um, really does look good. I think they did a great job on this. My only complaint would be this leg piece here that keeps coming off. But once you pose them on the on the shelf, it's not bad. And you can play with this thing. I, I think that's really cool. You know, it's it's something that's unexpected. And and for that reason, I'll probably leave the uh, translucent gun on that side, and maybe put the uh, regular hand on the other side for display purposes. So he's got kind of two guns. But yeah, great figure. Very happy with this. Uh, I will also be reviewing uh, MP21R, Red Bumblebee. Uh, and we also have our news video coming up for March. Uh, sorry about the delay. I just haven't been around to finish up production on that news video. Those take quite a quite a bit of time to produce so that should be coming up as well um, so definitely uh, leave me any comments um, subscribe and like we're also going to be having our uh, 400 subscriber giveaway that's going to be the masterpiece blue ko masterpiece blue streak uh, that'll be coming up in a week or so uh, we're just about at the 400 subscriber mark so thank you guys appreciate all the uh, comments and all the likes and all of that all right so we'll see you next time uh, thanks for watching